This documentary uses historic still pictures as moving scenes and live video to depict events of 75 to 100 years ago. The video was recorded in 1996. My name is Mulholland, William Mulholland. I rode into Los Angeles in 1877. I soon discovered that Los Angeles was a place after my own heart. It was a place wherein my whole scheme of life would develop. Let me tell you a little about my life and my career. When I first came to Los Angeles, I took a job as a laborer with the Los Angeles Water Works. My job was to clean the ditch that carried water from the Los Angeles River to a reservoir located in Elysian Park. A water wheel raised water from the Los Angeles River to a flume and ditches that carried water to the city reservoir. I could see that Los Angeles could become a great city if it could get enough water. While working for the Bureau of Water Work, I learned all about the distribution system and studied every book I could get on hydraulics, mathematics, geology, and other subjects. I soon became a straw boss, then foreman, and in 1885 I became superintendent. Eventually I became chief engineer and general manager of the Bureau of Waterworks. You know it in your time as the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. Enough about me. This story is about the success and failure of two major events in my career. Both were intended to help this city after my own heart become your dynamic Los Angeles. First the success. The Los Angeles owns River Aqueduct. People say I am the man who built the aqueduct. But although its completion in 1913 was the crowning achievement of my career, I simply provided the vision and leadership to an army of 5,000 who labored for five years to bring water 238 miles from the Owens River east of the Sierra Mountain Range to Los Angeles. Now see it as it is in your time, along with scenes from my time. The northernmost intake of the aqueduct system at Levining Creek. It's a great spot for fishermen. This map shows the 340 miles course of water from Mono Basin and the Eastern Sea Era 
via the Owens River and the aqueduct to Los Angeles. The outline map below shows the vast area of California involved. In 1940, a tunnel was dug to bring water from Mono Lake to the Owens River. This is Mono Lake near Levining. The next intake is on Grant Lake. Grant Lake receives the outflow from all of the lakes on the June Lake Loop. This beautiful drive around the June Lake Loop shows the tremendous watershed from the Eastern Sierra Mountains, which is available to the aqueduct. Lake Crowley on the Owens River is the largest reservoir in the system. It provides many power and recreational resources. The heavy dark line is the original 238 miles course of the aqueduct completed in 1913. The lighter line is a second aqueduct added in 1970. Scenes along the 340 miles will follow as we travel southward from the most northern intake to the Cascades in the San Fernando Valley. There are three power plants in the gorge below Lake Crowley. This is the lower or control power plant. Here Hattie shows the size of the penstock leading down to the power plant. This is the beautiful Owens River. It meanders throughout the Owens Valley. The Tinamaha Reservoir is used to regulate the flow into the unlined aqueduct channel. Here you see a portion of the open unlined aqueduct. The Alabama gates are used to divert water back to the river in case repairs are needed downstream. Jawbone Canyon, 120 miles north of Los Angeles, presented one of the toughest engineering problems along the aqueduct. The gradual gradient from the Owens River to Los Angeles delivers the water by gravity alone. A spectacular reverse siphon delivers the water across the 1,000 foot deep and one and a third mile wide canyon at the same gradient. The 10 foot diameter steel pipe reduces to seven and a half feet at the bottom and its pressure builds to 368 pounds per square inch. Two hydro plants are located in San Francisco Canyon. 25 miles northwest of Los Angeles. This is power plant one, it went online in 1917. The original five turbines were recently changed to four. It includes two of the original turbines. This display shows a Pelton wheel turbine. Plant number two, located seven miles downstream, went online in 1920. After a 450 mile downhill flow, over 200 million gallons water are delivered to Los Angeles every day by these aqueducts. In 1913, William Mulholland's address at the opening ceremony for the aqueduct was short and memorable. There it is. Take it. Here, ten years later, at the peak of his career and world famous, he is building more reservoirs to ensure a safe and steady reserve of water for his beloved Los Angeles in case man or nature disrupts the aqueduct. The St. Francis Dam in San Francisco Quito Canyon, built in 1925 and 26, was a curved concrete gravity dam 200 feet high to impound 38,000 acre feet of water near Los Angeles on the aqueduct system. It was the ninth dam constructed but only the second concrete dam. The water level had been
been just inches below the spillway for five days when just before midnight on March 12, 1928, a catastrophic collapse of the dam released a 180-foot high wall of water and debris. The raging flood scoured the canyon to bedrock and crushed, mangled, or buried everything in its path as it rushed to the sea 55 miles away at Ventura. The cause was poorly understood. Recent modern forensic analysis focuses on unrecognized at the time subterranean landslides upstream and adjacent to the eastern abutment. Five minutes later and two miles downstream at powerhouse number two the flood crested at 110 feet wiping out the powerhouse and the residential hamlet around it of 123 Department of Water and Power employees at the site. Only two survived, a mother and her child, who reached high ground in time. Mulholland accepted full responsibility, but no criminal negligence was ever determined. He resigned within a year, and Van Norman was named chief engineer and general manager. These scenes show the tragic aftermath of the dam's failure. Most roads between Southern California and Central California were interrupted. The final death count was never known and many bodies were never recovered. There is little left today to remind us of this second worst disaster in California's history. The first being the San Francisco earthquake and fire.